so this is the final look i am in love she is so gorgeous and i'm going to show you exactly what i did to achieve this look it actually was pretty easy so i'm hoping you can achieve the same thing stay tuned do you like do you like this could be a treasure okay so what i am doing here is pretty much preparing the wig for me to get going on coloring as you can see the bottom i had already colored this weeks ago i just never finished same colors i just never finished the whole wig so i'm getting ready to start doing it now as you can see i have my first color which is the blue and i'm going to just start coloring the top about two to three inches from the start of the track and then I eventually go in with the pink now just um, a couple of pointers here the brand ion the color you don't have to mix this with any developer and it comes out of the little packet pretty thick so be mindful that you want to use a brush that has strong bristles because you really got to put it in there as you can see I'm really pasting it on there pretty hard now the paint color it was a little bit more liquidy than this one the blue for some reason just I don't know if it was an old box or what I don't know probably not I think it's just this color was a little bit not challenging but just a little bit more difficult to apply evenly because it just is very thick now thick is good because you didn't want it to be super watery because you're having to go through and actually manually do this versus watercolors or just like saturating the entire head. But either way, you want to just go in and use a strong bristle and brush through and through and you want to lift that hair up and get the bottom because just going on the top is not going to penetrate the uh, shafts up here on the bottom or strands up here on the bottom of the track so you want to make sure you're careful I missed some areas later on in this wig and you'll notice it but it's because I wasn't very careful so you want to be very mindful that every stroke that you're putting in needs to cover those strands so um, here I am with the pink and all I'm doing is the same thing I did with the blue and I'm going on the bottom as well um, the pink was really easier to apply or much easier to apply and it really was just really light now what I'm doing here is using my the side of my hand to kind of just blend in those two colors and this is something I saw Cynthia Lumsey or Lumsey I can't I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right but she's on Instagram and she's pretty much the color the um, rainbow color queen and I saw her do this once in her technique of coloring so I just I'm doing the same thing and I saw it really did make a difference as you can see kind of in that center between both colors it kind of creates this purple and that is a, an effect of blending in color so if you look at the color wheels you'll know that blue and um, pink make purple so that is pretty much what I'm gonna do for the rest of the week so I'm gonna stop here so we can get to the rest of what I'm doing okay so we pretty much just did a couple more tracks and now we are heading to the um closure so what you see me doing here now is i'm adding a third color to this scheme and that's lavender so i'm coloring blue here on the top just like i've been doing the the rest now i will say i had to go and get color at this point when i got to the closure i ran out of that shark blue which was i expected it because um I didn't buy enough like I should have I rather you buy more than not enough so you can always return but to stop and go is frustrating because as you can see the colors almost look different in the in the blue because that blue has been sitting there for about an hour because I had to run out and go find it and it just was a bit much um, then I ended up going grocery shopping and all of that so it ended up sitting on that hair longer than it probably should have but I mean it is what it is so here you see me going in with lavender now lavender this lavender in particular same same brand ion it really is the color that happens whenever the pink and the blue touches so it really just adds a a, a nice gradient hue to this wig um and it just kind of gives it some really nice dimensions and you'll see 
when I'm done with the wig, how it just kind of has this really nice touch of lavender, which is like, again, a product of blue and pink together. So that's pretty much what um, I'm doing here. And I don't know where I went or why I stopped, but let me just kind of get to the rest of me doing the closure. Okay, so here I am pretty much on the last sliver of hair where um, I'm just continuing what I was doing. I got the blue at the root and then I have the lavender and then I do the pink. At this point in time, the hair has it, the top part, the closure does not get to saturate as much as the back did because again, I left the back done and then had to go get some more. So I was a little nervous that it wouldn't be as pigmented, but honestly it came out just fine. Um, that 613 here really does um, absorb color pretty well. So that's me just finishing it up and then I'm gonna get ready to wash it and then I'll um, show you some footage there. All right, so here I am showing you pretty much the wig sitting in the sink, just kind of soaking up the conditioner. So I washed out the wig, washed out the color. Of course the colors bleed, um, and you just have to find a good product. I'm still searching for some, so if y'all know, let me know, but I'm trying to find a good spray or product to help keep the color from bleeding. I know there's one by Matrix, um, but I have to, you have to have a license for some of that, and I don't have that, but either way, I just washed the hair out with some shampoo, and then I just let it soak in this conditioner. As you can see, the color turned out really good it really blended well those three colors in particular was a great blend for a cotton candy look all right so now i'm getting ready to blow dry the hair this is the uh, product that i use the turn up heat by beyond the zone it's a heat protector and i really love this brand it works really well it doesn't weigh the hair down so i just kind of missed it all over and i also end up going back track by track and i'll still add a little bit of mist um, when I flat iron later. But right now I just want to put a little protectant over it as I put this Baby Bliss blow dryer through this wig. Um, like I said earlier, this wig, for some reason, it just weighs heavy and I really think it might have something to do with 613 here, but then again, it could be me uh, because I'm, it just could be me. I don't know. But either way, I am going through and I'm just going to blow dry the rest of this wig. So I'll come back once I am done. All right. So now it's time to cut this wig into a better shape. So I am now clipping the hair up that I don't want to use at the moment. And I'm just going to start kind of uh, track by track. As I get a little further up, I start doing two tracks at a time because it gets real tedious and you start to just want to get things out the way. So um, here's the trick here because I have cut wigs in the past trying to make a bob and then it really was a botch job and it looked horrible. And when I put the wig on, it just was a horrible cut. And I'm sure I can relate to a lot of y'all out there who's done this so what you see me doing is I tilted the mannequin head forward so you want that mannequin head to be tilted forward and then you want to cut in an upward motion and you want to kind of cut to the base of that mannequin head so position the wig on the mannequin head as you would um, normally and what I'm doing here is just kind of snipping away at the hair up into the base of that mannequin head Again, this is a tedious job, but if you want your wigs to look as good as you can, you'll put in the work. So I'm zooming in a little closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Again, I'm just cutting the hair in an upward motion. Again, my mannequin head is tilted forward, um, and that's the best way for you to cut hair without having it look uneven when you wear it. So I'm cutting in like a snipping motion instead of just going straight across. I'm not saying you can't go straight across. I'm sure you can, as many people have, even with like um, a pair of, uh, what is the thing called? Uh, the, uh, blades, what men use to shave their face. Why? What's the word? Um, I, oh my God, I can't think of that. The shaver, whatever that is what is that word oh my god okay whatever point is you could use that if you want but i kind of wanted to 
have a little bit of a softer touch on the bottom, not a super blunt cut. I wanted it to be a blunt bob, but not quite blunt, just more of a soft cut bob. So this method will give you a little bit more of a feathered touch at the bottom. So it just has, again, a more natural gradient effect for the cut versus this blunt um, cut. So here I'm using my Baby Bliss Titanium, Baby Bliss Pro Titanium. I'm trying to wait for the camera to focus. Focus on me. Come on. Can you focus? There we go. Baby Bliss Pro Titanium. So this is my flat iron that I use. I got it from Sally's. Got it during the Christmas holiday sale. It was like half off. That's typically when I buy anything from Sally's as far as appliances go. So what I'm doing now is just kind of running through it and giving it a slight bump so I can visualize what that is going to look like. Because I'm a visual person. I could not wait until... I was done to go back and bump that I just couldn't do that because I need to kind of see where I need to go back and touch up like you see what I'm doing here now and yeah I'm going across just kind of cutting off those little feather tips but I'm gonna pretty much use this method going through just kind of snip 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 and again it is tedious but is well worth it so let's go ahead and speed up all right so here i've pretty much gone all the way up to probably the middle um maybe a track or two before i get to the closure and the same method is what i've been applying and then i'll go through and kind of just bump the tips and you can see it just kind of gives a nice wispy feel it's not just super duper blunt however i'm not saying you can't get the same effect with a uh i still don't remember the word a razor it's not a razor what is clippers 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 I'm not saying you can't get this effect with, with uh well you can get the same effect with clippers but again it would be very blunt and i just kind of wanted to practice another method of just trying to oh i'm so glad my elbows are not ashy that is good job marcia that that's a big that's that's really good for me actually uh, kind of but it's okay it's, it's, it's all that good stuff okay so at this point i've gone through pretty much the whole wig i'm on that last sliver of hair and this is the outcome i was very pleased with the look it just really just came out beautiful a great blend those three colors are awesome and i didn't really have a particular way of coloring it it was just kind of being creative and going with what I thought looked good. I love her. She is gorgeous. And she is giving me all kinds of vibes. I don't even know what kind exactly because she probably just gives all. But this is so perfect for the Easter holiday. I think this is perfect for the spring. This is great for a party. I just love it. I think she is absolutely gorgeous and she is definitely a keeper. This is one of the wigs that you just keep in your repertoire because when you wear it, honey, you gonna turn head. Hey y'all, so this is the final look of the wig. I cut it into a bob. And um, yeah. This is the final look. Hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think, um, what your thoughts are, um, any ideas or tips before I do another colored wig. But yeah, hope you like it. Bye.